In this video today, we play a mod that adds a brand new island to Hearts of Iron 4. And where is this island, you may ask? Well, it's in the Indian Ocean right here between Oman and the Raj. The perfect place for a new island. I would 100% vote for this to become a reality. It would be perfect to have an island right here. And to make things even better, to 10 times better, I dare say, it's not just a regular island. It's an island with an amusement park nation on it, led by our good old sacred King Harry here. Well, I probably shouldn't call this an amusement park. It's more like a horror show populated by, I don't know, serial killers, it'll look, it looks like, yeah. But it's all nice and cute, you know, yeah. It, it can't be, nothing can really go wrong. It's, this is gonna go perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thanks to the devs for giving me early access to make this video possible. And I guess I should probably explain what this mod is. It's the Sudi mod, after all, based off of the um, British cartoon. So they're like sock puppets. I still want to think of it as a horror show, but I guess it's wholesome. Well, <laughs> yeah, it might not be wholesome. The direction we'll be going today, because after all, this is Hearts of Iron 4, and being in Hearts of Iron 4 calls for certain things to happen. It's just the way things must go. We also start with more starting technology than any nation I've ever played, ever, in this game. Very, very cool. Medium tanks, computing machine, advanced machine tools. I don't know if this will stay in the final patch. It could, it could be changed still. But yeah, we won't be doing much with the medium tanks. We'll be going down superior firepower, researching some good fighters. Since we're an island, we'll need to invest a lot in marines and infantry divisions. Also, we have the best generals ever. My favorite general, Ramsbottom the fourth. It's like a snake. Yeah, mm. I've always wanted a snake to lead my armies. Very slippery and deceitful. The perfect makeup for any general. Also, we have a pirate, Swash Asuti. You know what this calls for. <clears throat> Yes, there's a full focus tree for our nation here. The devs described it as similar to a EAW focus tree, which yeah, definitely kind of feels like one. I would know I'm very experienced with the EAW mod. I, I may have played it a little bit. And we are very, very close to a nice little show here in Ethiopia, as I guess the neutral nation of Ethiopia gets annexed by fascist Italy. How dare he, Mussolini? We'll have our own fair share of wars against against a weak nation soon enough, though, I'm sure. And good old Corbett is pulling a Lord of the Rings on us and setting sail and leaving our world. I don't blame the man. I too would probably get fed up with living on an island with sentient sock puppets for a few years. So yeah, I, I guess, guess we get a new leader. They're the obvious choices, Sudi and Sue. But we will choose neither of them because where's the fun in that? We will choose Head of State Sweep. <laughs> a Prussian-esque flag now and we're Sweepland. Sweepland. The air unapparent. And I really appreciate how this focus here gives us an event called the Night of Sweepy Stabbies. I can only look forward to what events pop up in the near future. Okay, and under the cover of darkness, squads of soldiers fanned out across the capital, armed mainly with knives, swords, and axes. They set about rounding up all the democratic and communist leaders. Ah, marvelous. Head of state sweep formerly derided as being dumb, naive, clueless, and lacking vision, now proclaimed himself Emperor Sweep of the Imperium. Huh. Hail Sweep, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting flag. Our party is now the Imperial Sweepest Canine Domination Front. Hmm. Anyways, we've given our capital a perfect name. Now it's known as the Sweep Citadel instead. Great, yes. We're also preparing the army. Centralized it, we made conscription mandatory. We're, why am I on, wait, we're on all adults serve? Wait, what? It's okay, um. We're spawning in some free divisions and we're, we're preparing. Anyways, it's time for our first initial set of conquests. We'll go through Arabia. It probably won't be too terribly difficult. We'll see, I guess. It should do a fine job. I don't think Oman has any divisions really. Yeah, only one, so. We've made 
nice little empire here taking Arabia and strategically puppeting Kurdistan. Very cool. Keep forgetting that they have their own leader portrait and cores everywhere around here now. Yeah, we'll declare war in Iran now. Closer to the size of ours, so it was at least a little difficult, but yeah, overall it was nice. There we go, we just have the little bits of Britain sprinkled everywhere, but that won't last forever, I'm sure. Wait, our puppet is the Empire of Fire. That may be the coolest vanilla name for a country. The Empire of Fire, nice. We can also join Japan's faction, so we will do so. There we go, we are now in the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. That'll be very useful to us. We'll try to invade maybe some of China? Take parts of China for ourselves? China accepted the Marco Polo Bridge incident, and now Japan's justifying on them. So yeah, we'll be in a nice, fun war with China soon. We're also being very good in making anti-bullying laws. Yes, I know, we were the good guys all along. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, they, we, we just expressed it in interesting ways earlier, but now we've finally found our path. I think, maybe, possibly. Okay, and the war against China has begun. Japan will fail initially just because of their really bad Marco Polo Bridge Incident modifier, but that will disappear after time. We, however, have no such modifier, so we will immediately begin our invasions, get some more score for ourselves. I'm probably not going to annex any Chinese territory, but I would like to have some sort of Chinese puppet state under my control. And within days of entering the war, we should secure the enemy capital. And things are going amazingly well. We landed behind them here, encircling these divisions. This could be the fastest China War AI Japan has ever had. Of course, they had my help, but uh, I'll give them some credit. They need a break after all the torture I've put them through. There's kind of a mini Chinese civil war going on in the north. So yeah, we're really just having to fight Kaishak's China today. And the AI is doing rather interesting things. And some of our elite Praetorian cohorts. Yeah, and they're very, very nice. Are managing to push across this river and we will hopefully encircle all of these divisions in due time. Japan also landed at this port and we landed south of them. So maybe we'll be able to flank their entire army here. We'll see. Now I'm letting Japan hold the line while I pierce the center of the Chinese front. Oh, and Yunnan took over China. Interesting. And we've created the Three Kingdoms Phase 2.0. Two of the Three Kingdoms here in China are in the same faction though, so that's that's all nice. The Co-Prosperity Sphere is rather big. We're now going to go after the Allies though, so our troubles are about to begin. We have a nice focus here though, to do a surprise invasion of India, not just a regular invasion. So we get 10 tenwiths in random places in the Raj's territory, so that should help. We'll also be invading from three fronts, the front in Siam, the front in our puppet, and the front in Iran. So the invasion of India should go pretty well. We'll also try to seize the Suez, Syria, Kuwait, the rest of Arabia. Everything should go well, I, I would guess. Nice, and look at that. Also, the focus removed India as a British puppet, so I guess we didn't have to prepare for the war against Britain. Oh, yeah, they rejoined the Allies anyway, yeah. Hmm. Oh no, there's 11 French divisions here. I think it's time to use the navy to raid some ports. Yeah. And India will soon fall to our might. We also broke across the Suez and it's now firmly in our control. If anything goes terribly, we can now just blow it. Well, I guess I think we need Cairo first, but once we get Cairo, then we can just destroy it if anything goes bad. And for the Axis, things are kind of going 
terribly. Uh, I don't know how the Soviet Union invaded Sicily for sure. That's that's new. And even though we only have these six, not too heavily populated states, we now have 4.25 million manpower. You know, that's just the magic of La Resistance compliance. Getting 5% local non-core manpower in all of India and 8.2% local non-core manpower in all of Arabia really starts to add up. And Italy is pushing into France while the UK is pushing into Italy and the Soviets are pushing into the UK's Italy. Yeah, uh -huh. this is an interesting three-way war now. I guess us and the Soviets are kind of on the same team. That's, that's nice, yeah, cool. Not even considering the Emperor Sweep and the Sudi mod or anything, this is just a really interesting World War II. <laughs> Italy capping France while almost being capped themselves is very impressive. Green Iberia is very cursed. We're also taking North Africa while invading Greece. For some reason, the entire Greek army was in Tunis, so I guess their mainland isn't going to be very well defended. I can only assume. But yeah, anyway, that's where I have to end things off for today, unfortunately. I can't wait for this mod to come out. Remember to stay in tune for that so you can play it yourself. Thanks again to the devs, and I guess I will see you all next time with something very, very interesting.